Hello, my fellow Dickensians. My name is Tim Clark, and I am the chairman of the Greater Riverside Area Dickens Fellowship. I also attend the Los Angeles Fellowship meetings, and due to Zoom, I'm attending meetings all over the world. It's wonderful making new friends in our small circle of fanatics, and that's what we are. I also am on the board for the Dickens Project for our wonderful Dickens universe, which I look forward to every single year. And I'm so sorry we couldn't meet last month, but we're looking forward to next July. Courtney and I have been bandying about the idea of holding workshops for you, if you're interested, on the art of buying antique books, repairing antique books. Some of the topics that we would like to present to you include buying from an antiquarian online or finding the very rare ones that are still in business. How to research, how to repair books on your own, which you can do, you can do that. Um, we can describe to you what good book binder to rely on to repair. Most of you should have someone locally who would be quite reasonable. Fortunately, I do. I'm very, very lucky. Uh, how rebindings, contemporary and modern, affect the value of the book over the original cloth. Um, how to research the book's publication history. Uh, what questions to ask to make sure you don't get ripped off and you get a lesser copy or a later printing, which isn't a first edition at all. And I do have a couple of good places for you to research that I could share with you. So let me begin by advising you how to handle an old book. Um, handling an old book is much different than handling an ordinary book. If the old book is of a rare and scarce variety, is it, it's really especially important to handle it with great care. Any Charles Dickens, first or early editions, fall into this category. And I might add, um, Dickens is among the most expensive. It's a, it's a pretty bad addiction to have. And uh, you got to be very careful on how crazy you get. I have limited myself to just the bound volumes in first edition. Uh, if I went after the parts, I'd be bankrupt. Can't do it. Okay? Um, most of you know that I do have my own personal collection, which you can see behind me here in the bookshelf. And I've also pulled for you the two uh, editions that we have for auction. They were ready for this year, but we'll just hold on. We've got two, two first editions of David Copperfield ready for auction. Now, if you have visited me in the project library in the past, and you wanted to look at uh, an old book or a first edition, I, I welcome you to do it, but you might notice that I kind of hover over you just to make sure that you're handling it correctly as you peruse through it. And I, I have a really funny story to tell you. Um, when I first got involved in Dickensian uh, Fellowship, I attended a Christmas gathering at one of our Los Angeles homes. And this was, I don't know, 20, 20, 25 years ago. And there were going to be celebrities present. So I wanted to make a good first impression and be a big shot. So I brought with me my copy of Christmas Carol. This is my copy of Christmas Carol. <laughs> Boy, was that a mistake. Can you imagine my horror when one celebrity woman chose to open this up and flippantly go through it like she's reading a magazine. No, 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 no. I had to intervene quickly and I'm afraid I embarrassed her, but I said, no, you don't 
hold this book like that. And believe you me, I'm very, very careful now with whomever I allow to touch this book because it's not a true first because a true first is in a cinnamon colored cloth. This is the original cloth what you call the original cloth. It's, it's the publisher's original cloth. But the true first is a cinnamon brown color. And those can be worth five figures. This one, about six grand. How about that? <laughs> okay. So that was a big wake up call for me. Um, now I do have some rules that I can impress upon you while handling an old book. Wash your hands first. Get your hands nice and clean because you know we're very oily. And even though we don't think so, our fingers leave little oil prints on the paper, especially these old ones, which, you know, they're 150, 160 years old. Try to be seated rather than standing. Try to place a sofa pillow. I've got one, he's my favorite, and the little charger pillow. Place the sofa pillow upon your lap, okay? And then you can have the book stable on the pillow, supported by the pillow. That way the, the binding, the, the hinges are, are very carefully protected. Never let the boards fall loose. Now, let me show you something. Um, I've got a first edition here of uh, Barry's uh, The Little Minister, and I just picked this up. And the reason I was able to get it cheap is because someone had not handled it correctly. And you probably see this with a lot of books that you have. Always handle the book in the cup of your hand. Have that spine in the cup of your hand. You never let the board, that's what these things are called, the front and the back of the cover are called the boards. Never let the boards fall. You always want to make sure they remain somewhat upright. Someone let this board fall. And see, this is what you get. You've split the hinge, you split the joint, and this is in need of repair. This is why I was able to pick this up. Uh, what you see in there is called the webbing which keeps the book intact, the boards to the spine. Now, these are, these are easy to repair. You could do these on your own, and I'll show you how to do it. If you ever have used tacky glue, it's a wonderful thing. Okay. Now, let me, let me show you a book that I took to a bookbinder, and he put on a new cover. This is beautiful, isn't it? It's called Modern Rebound. This is called Vellum, which is kind of like a cheap one. Um, and they've got the gold lettering here, which is called gold stamping. And even though this thing has been rebound and it's nice and tight, you can see here, very nice and tight, I'm still gonna hold it in the cup of my hand. And if I want to look at it, I set it on my pillow and I gingerly open it. And I try to use my fingers, not my thumb, when I open it up. And you can see, here's your frontispiece with your Vignette title page. Now, when I do let people handle these, of course, the first thing they want to do is go to the illustrations, which are beautiful. Illustrations are beautiful. But you need to make sure your fingers are on the top or the side of the edges, that they're not on the pages themselves, because these are wood engravings or steel engravings, and they do bleed, and usually bleed on the opposite page of text. This one's not too bad. This is called foxing. And foxing is the result of maybe the stamping going on with the, with the press, a uh, little bit too much ink or 
normally in the woodcuts are still engravings, a little too much ink, and they don't allow it the appropriate time to dry. Now, I also have a, a, a contemporary rebinder. What that means is this copper wheel was bought in the original cloth, but you can see it's not the original cloth anymore. A lot of people who had libraries in their homes, and these were usually the wealthy and the fluent, they wanted all of the books in their shelves to look exactly the same. And so they would take them to their binder and they would have them remove the cloth. <laughs> you know, now if you get anything in the original cloth, it's, it's really cool because that's what you want. You want it exactly the way it was when it was published. But they wanted a uniform looking library at home. So they would pick a marbling. You can see I've got some wear here on the marbling on both boards. And they would have a leather spine put on with stamping. And they would also put leather points. Now, these points are important because they would prevent the bumping, which is what we call when a book edges are, are struck or hit in jostling about or not careful packaging, and they bend in. And so these leather points are very firm supports here. Now, this book actually is in very good shape, but I have had it repaired. Now, I could have done it myself but because it was a copper field in first edition, I took it to my binder. And you can see how he repaired the joints here. It's not too bad. Sometimes you just have to do it. Now see this. It's very rarely are you gonna find these books in perfect condition. It's, it's really hard to do. But I like this, obviously, more than I do the modern binder. I put more value on them because these are still as old as the book, really. Because again, these two will be up for auction next summer at the Dickens Universe. Now, when you are browsing through an antique bookstore, you, you want them to know you know how to handle an old book. And I've been to all the, all the really cool old bookstores in all of our major cities. Um, and my favorite is The Strand in New York City. Ask them if they've got a cushion in a place for you to sit down. And if they don't have a pillow for you, they usually have a foam, a styrofoam book holder. They do. You just have to ask for it. And there they can place the book in, in this book holder for you while you gingerly turn the pages. Now, when I was at the New York Public Library one year, a friend of mine had told me about this incredible Dickensian collection that was at the New York Public Library. And the only way you can gain access into this is to be fingerprinted and photographed and tell them you're there to do research. Well, I can do that, okay? But it's quite a procedure. It's called the Bird Collection. And once you get there, you are greeted by a security guard, and you are led to a table in the middle of the room, and you're given a pair of white gloves. <laughs> you have to fill out on index cards what books, titles you would like to take a look at. It is crazy good. It's, it, you know, you're like a, a kid in a candy store there. And you have to give an appearance that you're taking notes <laughs> in pencil or on a laptop. And I encourage you to do this if you're ever in New York City. They also have one of Dickens' original writing desks there in the corner for you. So that's one of my favorite stops. I can have my wife get. Uh, tickets to a matinee Broadway show, and I will go to the New York Public Library to the bird. So again, uh, we think it would be a good idea 
if you guys that are interested would like to learn a little bit more in depth. I know I've given you a lot right now, but let us know. Let Courtney know, let me know, and we'll be glad to set up some workshops on things I previously mentioned, okay? And make sure you stay tuned for other Dickens to Go presentations from our beautiful, lovely people that are amongst our circle. Have a wonderful day, everybody. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.